Welcome to the Life Transform podcast. I'm Simha and I'm Sarah and we are here chatting, sharing real life, real stories, deep truths, all about living a life transformed. It's all about how God impacts our life and how we're changed and how our life becomes a significant impact in the lives of other people. We're going to be here every week for this first season, so make sure that you subscribe and join the journey. Hey everybody, it is Sarah here and we are back with Simcha Hey, for another incredible episode of the Transformed Life podcast. I have to say for me, this has been so great. I am super excited about people being able to hear this conversation that we're having and to interact with it. So if you have any comments, any ideas, emails that you want to tell us or just personal stories that you want to communicate... How do they do that? You can comment below and connect in and definitely hit the website and feel free to drop us a message. We see everything that comes in and the Instagram account is very active as well. So feel free to chime in and get in touch any way you like. Well, the fun thing about the Instagram is all the pictures and all the visual part of some of this journey that's missing on a podcast platform. However, Mm -hmm. if you are doing this while you are driving or working out at the (laughs) gym or whatever, that's helpful because you can do multiple things when your eyes are not having to fixate on Instagram. It's true. So there is good to that as well. If you're running, keep going. You can make it. (laughs) Good. This is slowly (laughs) becoming a health and wellness podcast. (laughs) I'm noticing this. Yeah. Well, I think what's fun is... um, that we sometimes get to do actually, you know, activities together with our families as well, mm-hmm. right? So we both have dogs. We do. Um, one per fam. And um, our dogs come and visit the worship house. We do. We, we have worship dogs. Yeah, we do. Hallelujah pose dogs. Have you ever seen your dog lay down on its back with all its legs in the air? We call yep. that the hallelujah pose. Yeah, we have. My dog is incapable of remaining at home. So she escapes. She actually breaks out of the house whenever we have worship night. And there's this moment every time. I don't know how she gets out. It's true. I think she has like burrowed a tunnel or something (laughs) under the the house. (laughs) And she just arrives and she starts clawing at the window. And then she just goes and sits at the door, which is always open. We always leave the door open. Mm -hmm. And she just sits there in the presence of the Lord. And uh, she's the worship dog. So, yeah. It was fun. I think the last worship night. She, there was this quiet, you know, reverent moment. And someone was praying. And suddenly, here, <laughs> you know, it's her nails in the window. It's really, oh, Lola, really fun. Yeah, and then we have Bailey. Then we have Bailey, who is the new pup in the area, and um, I've noticed that she is becoming quite a little personality, oh, you know, yes. and um, she needs some lessons in <laughs> faith and obedience. Obedience, <laughs> primarily in obedience. I think she's coming into her teen years or something, whatever that is, you know, so. But I think one of the things that we most enjoy doing together is that we worship together. So our kids are really involved in everything that we do. And they, they are, both of us have a son each who are on the sound team. Mm -hmm. And And a girl each who are on PowerPoint and and PowerPoint and opening and praying and art and all these different things. And we definitely are big into training up the next generation and getting them going and like released. So yeah. I think, you know, if you're a, a parent or an, an aunt or an uncle or, you know, that you're listening to this, there's no greater thing that we can do than invest in, in that next generation that's from us. Like, I think a lot of people are thinking about how they can reach other people instead mm. of looking at that sphere that's close to us. And actually we're called to our field that God has given us to be that good steward of that field. And so sometimes, you know, it doesn't go according to plan. And also your family knows you best. So Mm. if you're spouting out a bunch of spiritual stuff, but then, you know, you don't have the behavior to back it up, they will call you out on it, (laughs) like right there, snap. So um, it's a good mirror to to where your walk with the Lord is, you know. And the way to capture their hearts is always food. Yeah, we're big on food. Food, movies, big on and food. FIFA. <laughs> <laughs> or dance-offs. Yeah. Well, actually, today's podcast is brilliant because everything we're going to talk about today is 
about how we hear the voice of God and what happens mm-hmm. when we hear God's voice. Yeah. Um, most of the time, you know, or I would say almost none of the time do we hear God's voice, an audible voice of mm-hmm. the Lord. Like I personally, I've never heard the audible voice of the Lord. I've, some people have described that. But that doesn't mean that we don't hear the voice of God. And there are many ways to hear God's voice and different people hear God's voice differently. Right. Mm, And so I think that if we um, look at what that looks like in the word of God, but also in our own experiences, and that could be something really, really cool for people to really know. There's lots of different ways actually to hear God's word. I think God hearing God's voice is probably one of the most life transforming things that can happen to you because he doesn't speak unintentionally. So whatever he's saying is going to be relevant and you better listen. I mean, I think Ascend itself was like born because of some pretty outrageous hearing the voice of God sessions that we had separately, right? Should we tell the story? Let's talk about that. Yeah, I think that's really important actually to communicate because everything that we're doing is born from a, a... a deep sense that we're called to do what we're doing. Mm. Um, but it was God calling us, not our own ideas. None of all of the work of ascend, including all the local events that we're doing and all the programs are anything that we have conjured up ourselves. Mm. It's really been the direction of the Lord. So how, you know, how does that come about? I mean, for me personally, if you're listening to the previous podcast, you heard that God called me up to Mount Carmel and, um, as, you know, some of us that were there, we encountered the voice of God and the presence of God, just the sense of really hearing from the Lord. Um, we, we thought this was our radical thought. We thought, well, if God is doing this with us, if he is transforming and changing us, surely he wants that for everyone. Yeah. And what we want to do is to make a place and a space for everyone to come into the true manifest presence of God, to engage with him and to be transformed. And so that's really kind of where some of that idea came from. So we started fleshing it out, talking about it, came up with, um, well, the first thing that we started with were regular worship nights. So we have a band that's made up of people from all different places and areas. So it's not just belonging to one organization or one you know, church or congregation is what we call them in Israel. Uh, But actually this show of unity and the spirit by the band being from multiple places. And then from that, we started to expand and we said, okay, but what about other people? What about people who aren't local, who can't come, you know, to worship nights? What if there was this way of having this journey, this, this time away um, that people could come away and, and really engage with God. And so we started fleshing it out and coming up with this idea of a program, of a school, um, and just having these kind of brainstorm conversations. And then one day, Simcha calls me and says... <laughs> Meanwhile, <laughs> um, yeah, so that was, that was all going on. I had no idea about it. I had... I knew the worship nights had started and I was devastated that I couldn't be a part of it because I was still in this season of like intentionally pulling away from congregations. Um, And one day I was really having a very dark valley moment where I was, you know, I hadn't even managed to get dressed. I was in my dressing gown. How many days like that? Oh, so many. I mean, so many. And I was sitting at the table with my youngest son who is a bit of a firecracker and he was very happily throwing porridge oats all over the dining room all over the floor and in the middle of this tired weary moment of frustration of yet another mess to clear up uh, God gave me probably one of the most vivid visions I think I've ever I'm not somebody that has these you know ridiculous visions all the time I this is probably the only time actually where this has happened to me where I was almost in like an outer body experience which sounds really weird I promise it's not where I'm like looking down on myself and God just showed me like a series like a slideshow of series of snapshots of of different things going on with different people in different places and I knew exactly what was going on in these pictures and I kind of knew the kind of title I knew it was a worship program I knew it was Sarah was involved I knew other people were involved and 
once I, and I was watching my son destroying my living room at the same time as this happening and I couldn't do anything about it because I was so inside of this vision. And then when I kind of, when God decided that's enough, you need to deal with the porridge. Um, <laughs> I was like, okay, I have to call Sarah. But I was terrified because I had, I did not want to like steamroll, what's the word? Steamroll, whatever is going on already. Like I, I don't want to assume God said this so that now we have to do it. Like I didn't know what was going on. I didn't want to take over or impose on what was already happening. So I I went to see her and I was terrified. And Sarah has this amazing gift where she can <laughs> she can sit in front of you and not tell you anything of what she's thinking or feeling on her face. Like it's just totally like deadpan. So I was like, I have no idea what she's thinking. She might be like, how very dare you? And I was like, oh. So halfway through this conversation, I'm trying to tell her what God's done and she just puts her hand up like, stop. Yep. And she pulled her phone out and hit like voice notes record and was like, start again. And I was like, Ter I just terrified. And when we got to the end of it, she just said, you've just told me back word for word, the vision that we've had, the vision that we've seen. And yes. And so from there, we went and sat with leadership and presented it as a kind of what do you think moment yeah. for them and I think that that just even in this story before we delve into you know hearing the voice of God and yeah. that um, there's already a huge lesson just in what you've just described which is the idea of confirmation mm -hmm. so you know yeah. what happened from my perspective of this story is we had been having these meetings we had been having these kind of concept development brainstorming sessions kind of just talking through kind of what we feel that God is um, putting before us in this idea of ascend but we, we didn't know who was going to be involved we didn't know you know what it would look like we had nothing and there was this really is like that that moment of that birth just that little seed you know that's sown and so to suddenly just have someone who who is not involved at all in any of these conversations from the outside come and say, you know, I've had this vision. This is highly unusual for me, you know, and God basically showed Simcha everything that we were discussing without her ever being in the room. Mm. And so for us, this was a big moment and it really um, gave one of the DNAs of the team on Ascend, which is, these are all people who are first and foremost called by God to yeah. do this. So anyone who's on staff or on this team that you encounter and you engage with throughout different events or programs that we run, these are all people who God has specifically given that vision for this, the heart, I would say, for this, for people's transformation, invested, fully invested in mm. with, with partnering with God for people's transformation on the earth and called by God. And so... The first thing I would say, uh, well, two main things we'll talk about it and, and about hearing the voice of God is one doesn't align with scripture. Mm -hmm. And, but two is that confirmation. And for me in my life, I've really held fast to that. Um, because when I was actually fairly young, I was in my teens and I had a really bad experience with somebody, um, coming up to me and saying, you know, thus says the Lord. Oh, yeah. Um, and it was actually very negative. Mm -hmm. Um, it was complete strangers. It was so negative and it came out of left field. There was no context to, to that, to what they were saying. And, and, and I literally felt, I was like, when they were speaking to me, it was mm. so clear this wasn't for God, but it was so, um, I was young, I was very impression impressionable and they're saying to me, you know, well, God's given me a word for you, you know, and it was so bad. And, um, I remember just kind of rocking back, you know, and, and because it was probably the first time I think anybody had told me, you know, I have a word for you. And, um, praise the Lord that actually the congregational, it was in a congregation, the congregational leader, um, her, the wife was there and I, I, and she saw me and she saw that something, you know, was, I was very preoccupied and she asked me what was going on. So I shared that with her and she said, absolutely. When, you know, you think God is speaking something or not or what you have to have confirmation when God mm. speaks, then he gives confirmation. And that 
is a very, very important principle. Does it line up with the word of God? And is there confirmation? And you can ask God for confirmation. And I've seen God really, you know, speak to me different things or use other people to speak words and then confirm over and over again. You know, I've had a particular word in my life confirmed somewhere between seven to nine times right now. I mean, it's so clear, you know, yeah. so I can trust that I can yeah. rest in that, you know, but yeah. we've digressed all the way back. So let's go. <laughs> <laughs> let's come back to just how, how, how people can hear the voice of God. Well, I think like we've talked already before in previous um, episodes that we are on a stand, we take people on a journey and we take people on a journey we've walked through ourselves. So we're not asking anybody to go anywhere we haven't been ourselves. And that's really important. And we're willing to go there again with people. But I think it, it all it all follows suit. You can't hear the voice of God if you are not willing to come into his presence. And if you're not willing to come into his presence, you know, it's all, it's a knock-on effect and it's a gradual, uh, it's a journey. That's why we call Ascend a worship journey because it's about moving through these series of events that move you closer and closer and closer to this transformed life. And hearing the voice of God definitely comes part and parcel with being in his presence. And if we're not living in his presence and regularly, intentionally cultivating that place, we're not going to hear his voice. And yeah. um, we'll hear a lot of other stuff and we, we might mistake it for God's voice. And that's definitely mm -hmm. something that is 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 a problem it's you know i've also had very unhelpful words <laughs> spoken over my life and we can hear things that are are not god's voice and assume that it is god's voice because somebody has said it is or because it's wrapped up in holy language or whatever mm -hmm. it is but if like sarah said if it's not in line with um with the word and it's not confirmed we don't have to take that on. I think another thing is, does it line up with other words? Like if something is completely in contradiction to other words that you've had that may have already been confirmed, then I would always question that or at least definitely wait for a confirmation mm -hmm. because, you know, God is consistent. He doesn't change his plan over your life. So if somebody comes along and brings a word that is completely outside of anything he's spoken before the chances are it may be off <laughs> yeah i mean so first off right what we're saying is whatever you know the voice of whatever voice you think you're hearing but the voice of god really aligns with the word of god because right. it's the first thing of god's voice is his word yeah because that's what he's spoken and so in order to know that, you actually need to be an avid reader of the word of God. Right. You actually need to know the word of God. If you don't know the word of God, if you're just listening to people giving messages about the word of God, that's not the same as reading the word of God. Yep. You need to read the word of God for yourself and not rely on other people's opinions or even revelations as God-given as they are. So that when you know you feel like God is saying something or somebody is communicating that to you, you can immediately test that. Mm -hmm. Like the Bereans. Do you remember when it says that they tested everything with the word? So the first thing is that we need to know our plumb line. We yeah. need to have that in our life. The second thing is if you are busy talking to God, but not listening, you're not going to hear his voice. Yeah. You're not going to hear God communicating to you, even though he's continually wanting to. If you don't take the time to actually sit and listen. So if you come to God with your shopping list and that's your prayer time and then you're done, you have taken no time to listen to him. Mm -hmm. um, I love communicating with God by asking questions. I'll just ask God questions, you know, whatever it is that I'm thinking about. Um, I actually communicate with God throughout my day continually. Mm -hmm. So it's not like I have my special time. This is my God time. And then I get on with everything else. So I'm, I'm kind of in this continual conversation. But one thing I find that's helpful is um, to put myself in that environment, an environment that inspires me. Mm. So for example, oh, sure. for me, nature, just getting out to a place where I cannot see anything man-made. So no buildings, no roads, no cars, you know, as, as, as unadulterated as I can of you, um, at just walking out into an olive grove, cause we live next to olive groves or into a field or, 
or on the onto, onto a mountain. Um, I try not even like parks, although if you live in a city and this is what you have, go for it. But if you can get out to a place where your eyes are just looking at, some, at things that God made, um, even in your own home, you know, putting some plants in your house or just things that, that God has made, um, just sitting, it, it's, it, it's very, it gives you that place of rest that we were mm-hmm. talking about also. And it, it helps me to hear God because he's the creator. And so surrounding myself by what he made mm-hmm. as opposed to what by man has made mm. is, is like so easy for me to, to communicate with God. I think that's really key actually, because I think we, we don't often set ourselves up for success. I think it's actually about self-awareness sometimes, like actually what feeds my soul and what takes me to a place where I am most ready, like I'm a most willing vessel to receive from God. And what, you know, for you, I'm also the same with nature and with just beauty being around me. And it actually, for me, I'm actually very happy in my house when it's clean and tidy and my children have not, you know, (laughs) (laughs) or doing a makeover. Yeah. Those are my happy places. Um, but you know, I can't afford to fly to Italy every, every morning to sit on a mountainside and watch the snow. I can't, I mean, that's the the dream, but, but I know what feeds my soul. And so I can set myself up for success in that I know how to create an environment where I know I'm going to be able to be still, I'm going to be able to rest, and I'm going to be able to shut up and listen. And I think a lot of people don't know what that is. And so they, they do what you said, they, they bring their shopping list and they, they do like, they go through the motions of a quiet time. And that's, that's like, that's where they're listening, but they're not listening. And, and I think it's, it's actually, it's taking sometimes a step back and, and really analyzing yourself. Where, where do I feel most at peace, most at rest? Where, where is my soul fed? And some people are not visually stimulated at all. And they may not, they may be able to hear from God in an absolute chaotic mess, Good which you, doesn't bother them. People. I know. I mean, these are people that are designed to have 15 children, <laughs> but they may, they may, relate to God much better through through hearing or doing or drawing or writing or any other kinds of things um that that feed them and and that becomes a place where they can sit quiet and and hear God Um, so I know that you journal a lot for example yeah so talk talk a little bit through that process well I think the first thing with journaling is it empties your brain. So the shopping list is written down. God, you, you've dealt with it. Like it, it's not that the shopping list and the, the list of things that you do need to bring to God is gone. Like it's actually relevant. It's important to acknowledge. But then once it's written down and it's put on paper and you've, you've kind of expressed it, you don't need to keep regurgitating it a million times over. God has heard it the first time. And then you can shut up. And that helps me to do that. I write the stuff I get it all out and then I listen and then I'm quiet and I can have I can I think that sometimes we we worry that God's not going to know about that thing because we haven't nagged or prayed enough or written it enough or brought it before him enough and we have to kind of keep doing it and it's difficult because it does say you know to to fervently ask and to you know and we have the story of Jacob with wrestling and there's all these kind of stories in the Bible about not giving up and never letting go and I will not let go until you give me a blessing and so that's kind of basically an excuse to nag God really if you're really honest but then well, Hannah right she prays for also, Samuel yeah, and she gets I mean, her son yeah fervent prayer and that's really intercession also yeah it's like really going for it and not letting go until you see a shift but then the, there also needs to be alongside of it this willingness to just let it go and listen to him and to trust that he knows your heart and the fact that you're dying to nag him more he knows he knows that it's important to you but he might have stuff he wants to talk to you about other stuff that's bigger than you or outside of you or maybe he wants to actually expand you or your world and I think we miss that often because we haven't put ourselves in the right position and we can't put our stuff down Mm. so that's journaling for me so if you're like someone who's listening to this and you you you're maybe you're questioning and you say you know I don't know if I've ever heard the voice of the Lord you know what does that sound like so 
Um, I would say a few helpful tips on this are number one, you know, at this, so if I don't journal, but I do have my phone next to me because at the same time, Which is, by the way, like yeah. the biggest no, no for quiet times. No, never have your phone next to no, you. I, I have my phone next to me for a reason because, um, I, sometimes I will start to think of things that need to get done or I need to buy like, you know, Oh my goodness, mm -hmm. we ran out of jam, you know? Yeah. So if I can just jot this down in a note, yeah. I just have a note open and whatever is trying to, you know, crowd my mind and, and not allow me to be at rest, yeah. I will just write it down so I can remember it later instead of it nagging me mm -hmm. so that's why I have my phone next yeah, to me <laughs> that's good and and so I can just file away all these you know oh my yep. goodness I have to do this I forgot to do that I need to fill in that form whatever it is that's going on I can just write that down and set my phone down and then and that's over there and it's taken care of because I can deal with it at a later time um, and so that's first and foremost the second thing is that I would say, you know, that the enemy is also trying to speak to us. He's also trying to communicate with us. And it, it part of hearing the voice of God is, is like a muscle. It's the exercise mm. of, uh, of understanding whose voice you're listening to. Yes, is this good. my own mind telling me things, my own thoughts? Are these divine godly thoughts? Or is this the enemy trying to speak to me? So the, fir you know, the first thing, and, and really the, d the fact of discernment, the mm -hmm. idea of how we discern, is this the voice of God, is through the fact that when we become believers, the Holy Spirit comes to dwell within us. So the Spirit of God communicates, right, the Word of God to us. And the Spirit of God is not speaking to us what the world is speaking to yeah. us or the devil is speaking to us, right? You should this and this, you are not enough. Mm -hmm. You could have, you know, all these things, anything that has a hint of that condemnation mm. is not from God. Now yeah. that does not mean that God doesn't speak correction to us. Right. So there could be a word of correction, right? This is where we went wrong and this is really aligning ourselves with God and, and causes us to repentance. But the word of God says that it's his kindness that yeah. leads us to repentance. So if there is not kindness, that is not the word of God. And that is so important because when you try to communicate with God, the enemy is right there trying to communicate to you to get you off point mm -hmm. to try to derail you from listening and hearing the voice of God. Um, and then there's a question of, is this my own thoughts? Am I coming up with this idea mm -hmm. here or this is really God? And that's where the principle of confirmation helps me. You know, mm, I yeah. really say, okay, Lord, if this is you, confirm it. And yeah. else I'm not moving forward. Yeah. You see, if God wants to propel you to do something or to go somewhere or to meet someone or whatever it is, change something, he doesn't lack any ways of communicating with you if you're willing to listen. So if I think about something or I have a great, what I think is a great idea, you know, is it a great idea or is it a God idea? So in order to understand if it's God's idea, I wait for confirmation. And sometimes yeah. I'll wait a long time on something that I really want to do, mm. you know? Yeah, I think I think the confirmation is, is a real key. And I think one of the ways that I often test words, all the things you've just said, whether it's my own thoughts, whether it's the enemy, whether it's God, is is the fruit of that word like what is the fruit in my life of receiving that word is that going to send me into anxiety and guilt and regret and doubt or is this going to propel me closer towards god or or to propel me forward in a step or to encourage me in my faith or in my whatever and i think that's become a real like a, a good a test really is is what is the fruit of this the word whether it's from someone else or from or myself hearing from god um the fruit should always be sweet it should always be in line with with scripture like it says in the in the word that the word that it should be edif edifying and beneficial and if it's not either of those then it should be tossed out um and there have there's plenty of times when we miss here and we miss give words and we receive things over ourselves that are not from him um I think also something to to consider in this is that the word of God is specific. Yes. And the words of God are specific. I mean, I don't know. You know, there's the other side of this, which is people who are word hungry, <laughs> right? They are continually, you know, mostly actually they don't listen to God for themselves. Mm -hmm. They are 
going to conferences, <laughs> listening online, um, all this kind of stuff non-stop. for other people who will go to God on their behalf and hear a word for them. Mm-hmm. So instead of exercising that muscle, yeah. they are relying on someone else's exercise to bring them a word. Now, let me tell you something about that. Number one, I don't know if you've looked at like a fit person versus a non-fit person. That fit person can run faster. They can um, defend better. They are, you know, so much more effective than the non-fit person. So first of all, if you want to be an effective believer, you want to exercise all of your muscles, right? All of your muscle groups in your spiritual walk. Um, Also relying on other people means that you are judging that they are where they should be with God. Yeah. And let me tell you something. (laughs) You can never know what is in the heart of someone. This is one of the biggest mistakes that people make as believers. You judge by what you see on the outside, but God judges the heart. Mm. And so if you are relying on other people's spirituality, instead of doing the disciplined work of exercising your spiritual muscles, um, you don't know what's really going on in that person's life. You don't know what's really going on in their heart. And so it's, 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 it's great when someone gives you a word of encouragement. And I mean, I'm not saying that that's a negative, but first and foremost, you should know how to hear the voice of God for yourself. Yes. And the extra bits are the extra bits on the side, but it's super important that you have that, that daily discipline actually of of doing that. Yeah, I, I, I so agree. And I, I think that one of the biggest stumbling blo- blocks with developing that skill of listening to God for yourself is that you become very self-focused. And and I think one of the things we do on Ascent is we we really address this. Like there's a lot of work and we love to see people going deep and dealing deeply with God in their own lives. But we've said before in a previous episode that this is actually all about bringing God's kingdom and it, partnering with God to impact others and impact the world around yes. us and to bring be kingdom bringers to the world that we're in. And so we kind of love it on a sun to shift the balance. Like halfway through, we move from being very self-focused, inward looking in a good way, doing some deep business with God through the program and through the journey we're walking. And we try and shift the focus so that it becomes more outward looking. And one of the things that we do is we run a workshop where we we do um very practical learning to listen to the voice of god for other people and it is always amazing to us to see how many people in the room have never done that before they've never intentionally listened for other people i think we all get very used to listening for ourselves we all desperately want a word from god all the time which is great but sometimes god can do deep work in us by giving us words for others like we get to hear his heartbeat outside of us for people around us and for situations around us and that is an amazing gift to be given so we do this workshop and we give some very clear boundaries <laughs> which is let's talk about boundaries yes very important um yeah, it's and as you're listening to this, by the way, if someone has come to you and given you a word that's out that's outside of these boundaries, I would say caution. Yes. <laughs> Red blinking light. <laughs> yeah, big stop sign. Um yeah, we we talk a lot about boundaries because, you know, God is safe. And, you know, one of the things that in fact, Sarah, why don't you just quickly tell us a bit about that part of the tabernacle that is all about safety? So there's actually an incredible thing that goes on inside the pattern of the tabernacle. If you look at how the tabernacle is laid out, when you come in past the gate, you have the altar, and that's where all the sacrifice was being done. And then you have the wash basin, which was the next station before you enter into the holy place. When you enter the holy place, there are two elements inside the tent that basically the people from the outside couldn't see. One is the menorah, that's um, the candles, the seven candles, and that's actually like a oil, oil lamps, right? And the other is the table of showbread. And I think the most incredible thing about it is that 
neither of those elements are ahead of each other or have more prominence than each other. So when we look at the tabernacle and we study that on ascend, we look at the oil being the Holy Spirit, mm -hmm. the light of the Holy Spirit, and then the bread as being the word of God, yeah. right? Give us today our daily bread. That's the word. And really, when you look at how God laid out this pattern, he didn't give prominence for one or the other. Mm. So if you are looking at a very theologically heavy, legalistic, religious kind of environment that negates the life of the Holy Spirit, you know, you're going to find yourself in a, a very, very um, problematic environment actually it could be seriously detrimental and dry then, and dry but have you been on the other side right Ooh, <laughs> crazy holy spirit untethered untethered to the word of god all kinds of experience a very experience driven you know not mm -hmm. word driven oh i feel this i felt god you know i this happened that happened feathers are falling from the sky whatever it is you know nothing to do with things that are inside of the word of god that's also uh, can develop into an unsafe environment. Yeah. And so actually having both of those elements in your life, um, keeping equidistance from those um, is the place of safety. Yeah. And I love the, the tabernacle pattern because you, as you walk through it from the perspective of the priest, which is worshipers, which is what we are, we're talking about during Ascend, is you, you come across all the different elements in front of you until you reach this point where they are on either side of you and you walk between the two you walk exactly through the middle and I think that's kind of the basis of what where we draw our boundary lines when it comes to word we're hearing words for people giving words to people it needs to be rooted in the word but led by the spirit and it needs to be beneficial encouraging building up so that so the basic boundaries we we lay out for people is that you never prophesy over somebody birth death or marriage as a very basic rule <laughs> i personally say that i think you should say that one again slowly so birth, that's really important birth, so don't say telling people that they have going to have a child or when they're going to have a child right? never never okay. prophesy yeah. about birth yeah. babies fertility it's just okay. it's a big no-no because it's a big topic it's we never know how what people are walking through if it's something they've already struggled with or or it's just not wise I just think anything to do with a new life like that is is not it's not wise to prophesy about marriage is the same I personally have received very unhelpful <laughs> words about marriage um very funny story that we tell during Ascender and uh and also death um, so don't tell people you're going to die. Yes. Or okay. it's, yeah, these are just n not. Or wise. you're not going to die. Yeah. Yeah. That that would that would be an interesting word to give someone. Um, but I think that you know what's what happens during this workshop is always amazing because people you know we're very heavy <laughs> we're quite strong about these boundaries like do not overstep the line if this word is not going to build up encourage and release somebody don't say it. So they're all very nervous about saying anything. So when they say the words they hear, they're very kind of cautious and a bit kind of, oh, I'm not sure. But they're always amazing because sometimes they don't even know who it's for. And they just say, I saw this, I heard this, I don't know who it's for. But it's amazing to watch people claim those words because they've confirmed something mm -hmm. or they've reconfirmed something or someone else has just given them a word the day before that's exactly the same and this person didn't know. There's all kinds of stories that unfold and it's a real amazing example to see how God really can, is, and we don't credit him enough, but he is very able to speak um, when we listen and he can confirm himself and he knows when we need that and he can give it as many times as we need until it becomes stupid. <laughs> but he can and he does confirm his own word so let's talk a little bit about that so hearing hearing the voice of god for other people um i know that you have a gift where you hear a little differently because you actually see things mm. as much as you hear things like you see a what we picture, you know you say yeah. a lot of times i see a picture so describe to me what that looks like what's that process well i think something that i always do during ascend is i spend the whole time I, I intentionally say to God, what, what have you got to say for these people? 
And, you know, we always, as a team, feel God gives us a theme in a way for the people that come. There's usually something that consistently comes out in in interviews leading up to the program or we have an intercessory team as well that prays over every person that comes and sometimes a theme comes out there and, and just becomes clear that the focus, like very broad stroke focus for this group is going to be X, Y, Z. And so when I, I have that in the back of my mind, when, when we have the big gatherings, like worship things or meetings, and I just, I just listen. I just, I don't actually know these people. So I, it's actually a lot easier to listen when you have nothing, you, you have a blank canvas. And so when he, he highlights a person or gives you a word, sometimes these pictures pop into my mind that I, I, it's not me because I've not been, th- one time I remember um, sitting in the back of the room and I think Sarah might've been speaking or someone else was speaking. And I just saw a picture of a ladder. Now, this is not an image that I'm particularly thinking of when I am in the middle of coordinating a program with a clipboard and money and all these things are like, you know, very natural to be stressing out about during the program. Although we never stress because it's a very smooth running machine, right? (laughs) We never forget anything. It's so true. But, you know, when you are, you have to juggle a lot of balls when you're running something like this, there's a lot to think about and, and juggle. So when I sit and just listen, I don't have a frame of reference for anyone in the room because I don't know them most of them have their back to me so when an image or a word or a verse pops into my mind I'm I'm gonna assume it's God until until it becomes clearly not because it's it's something that I'm not naturally thinking about I'm not I haven't been sat there thinking about my garden at home and oh look a ladder like it's just completely random and out of the blue and a nice, and I'm like, okay, so what's a ladder and who is this for and what does this mean? And then he starts to unpack it and he starts to add to the picture and he starts to, to develop it. But what I've also learned um, is sometimes he waits for me to go and pray for a person before he gives the second half of the picture. And that's always a really amazing thing for me because it's a step of faith for me to go and deliver something, even if I don't know what it means to be able to say to someone, I feel like God's saying this and I don't know why. So I'm going to pray. And when we pray together, what always happens is I cry. Mm. <laughs> That's always a good indication. Um, but then he, he, he often just fills in the blanks that haven't been clear to me. And sometimes I think God loves to do that. He's like, are you willing without the full story to just step out? in with me and bless this person because I've got something to give them and I think that's yeah that's kind of what happens for me is sometimes it's in stages sometimes it's complete but it's usually something I have not been thinking about and it just pops into my head like for you I had a picture for you one time of a river and at the time I was like making a drink like coffee for a bunch of people and I'm like stressing in the kitchen and trying to like make things and manage whatever and suddenly I'm like oh a river and I'm like okay what what's why am I thinking about rivers and then I'm like okay this is a word for Sarah there's prayer going on we're you know listening we're trying to hear God's voice for people and then he speaks and he builds it and he fills, he colors the picture and he gives the detail. But sometimes he waits till we pray to give the full picture. Yeah, I think also I can, I, I for sure in my own life, you know, have received sometimes, you know, words um, and a, a really nice and humble way to say something like that is, you know, um, I, you know, I've just felt God has told me this or Mm -hmm. God has told me to do this, you know, and please, you know, just take it to the Lord and have him confirm, et cetera. But I've had people that have done that, you know, they don't know what I'm, my, my communication with God and they will come and they will say something specific or they will do something so specific that is like, they have no idea. And in their world, what they're saying or doing doesn't make any sense at all. But to me, it makes all all the sense in the world yeah. because it's exactly what God has been speaking or it's a question that I've posed to the Lord that he in his amazing mercy has chosen to do this incredible thing you know and um and and that's that's really something that that sometimes I'll lean on you know because when your circumstances are not aligning with the mm-hmm. word of God mm-hmm. right how many times do we live in this tension that the circumstances don't align with the word of God but 
are we going to go with the circumstances or are we going to go with God's word? Mm. And so if we go with the word of God, um, with the wisdom of God, the, and, and that's why actually Holy Spirit in our life is so important because mm. Holy Spirit's a spirit of wisdom. And so we have to have that wisdom to discern. Mm-hmm. Is this the word of God? Is this God speaking? But when you have that confirmation, that is something so strong yeah. because it becomes personal. Yeah, It's not just about or just quote unquote reading that Bible, but these words personalize the word of God to our yeah. own life. And so they make us courageous. Yeah. And I think that that is so important as we're moving forward in the times that we're living as a body of believers that are called to make disciples in all nations, we need to become those warriors. We need to become courageous and having that confidence in, uh, in a word of God over your life in the word of God in your life makes you courageous. Yeah. You know, because you're, you're like, if God is for us, who can stand against us? If you know that, you know, that you know that mm. you can do incredible things. I, yeah, I think that's really important, but it's, it comes with a really important tension where we can't get overconfident and over cocky in what we hear and how we hear God. So we, we need to be confident, courageous warriors, all of what you just said. But then when it comes to delivering God's voice to other people, we need to exercise like real caution, caution mm-hmm. and not ever lose that sense of like, it's a big thing. Yeah to speak in God's name over somebody's life. Like you don't want to abuse that place. Like you don't want to put God's name on something he hasn't said. So there needs to be like that real check that this is God. And and again, and to give it in, in humility, like you said, like I'm, I, please check this, please, you know, don't take my word for it. Go test God on this. If mm-hmm. this is him, he will confirm it. Um, but also being courageous and confident enough to do that it's like this tension we need to live in yeah I think for me personally I am uh, what I would say is when I hear the word of God or the voice of the Lord it's typically more corporate so I have Mm. had rare rare moments where I've heard something or seen a picture over someone specifically Mm. Um, most of the time where I will receive a word from the Lord okay um, it's typically during worship um, during a worship watch, during extended worship. And I will have this sense, this kind of understanding, almost hearing this, these words in my spirit. Yeah. And, um, it's, it's a lot of times just, you know, being obedient to sing that out. Mm. And it's typically will be a word for a time or a place. So it's not specifically to a person um, or to their particular season, but rather it's some like a prophetic word that God is releasing, something that he wants to speak over people to encourage, build up, and edify. Um, And you can sense the shift in the room when that happens. And also I think when you're giving a word to someone, right, and they confirm it, you can sense that that is the word of the Spirit of God, not a conjured up person man word you know um because it shifts something it shifts in the spirit and there's power behind it because the word of god has authority to it Mm -hmm. so there's an authority that comes to that and so for me it's typically you know a word over a nation or over a place or over a congregation or over um people or a situation so it's something that's kind of more Yeah, I would call it corporate in that sense. Um, And so a lot of times, you know, when we worship, we are singing about God, we are singing to God. And then there's these break in moments where God sings through us. You know, Mm -hmm. he sings his word. He releases his word all through through also through intercessors. So uh, we've seen that as well, you know where an intercessor will receive that word from the Lord and release it in prayer. And there's power to Mm. it. You know, Yeah, for sure. I think it's amazing that God has created a way for both of these to exist together like you have people that hear corporate words that edify the body as a corporate thing like and it can it can totally transform a room and where that meeting goes and what where those people go together but then he also gives people the ability to hear his heart for a single person in the room and how an individual life can be also transformed 
in the same actually the same way but it's a it's just amazing to me that these can coexist and i i love i love seeing how god can break into a meeting and show up into a, a place both corporately and individually and and all of it is about transformation again yeah. it's always about transformation and are we willing to go where he's taking us and are we willing to go where he wants to take us we 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 often have our agenda you know our song list and the amount of time that we have for worship and that's all <laughs> and we, we, we're not negotiable and sometimes God's like yeah but if you come this way come this way with me then we can actually make some do some damage here in a good way <laughs> and uh you know assault the kingdom of darkness essentially yeah. and yeah. but are we willing like sometimes I think our agenda is actually much more important to us in that moment this is like the good samaritan parable right where these the the priest is going by the levite you know they're going to their 24 7 worship journey <laughs> watch you know they're going to do the important work of the ministry yeah and here there is this individual this one person mm -hmm. you know and the the samaritan the guy you know the first responder the guy from totally the wrong kind of guy stops for him and i think that that is a picture of god's heart god is actually very personal yeah he's involved in the little details of our lives and he doesn't leave anyone behind he yeah. leaves the 99 and goes for the one he's always pursuing us mm -hmm. and the question is are we pursuing him are we pursuing his voice are we making that place and that space and that time in our life to hear him um for us personally for for where we are you know i know people who prayer walk in neighborhoods yeah. for example and they're praying and they're listening to god and they're declaring verses and scriptures um that are specific to you know that area and that place and just declaring the promises of god hearing specifically what the strategy is in the spirit if you yeah. like to to you know to push back the kingdom of darkness yeah. in, you know in a space and a place this is all part of exercising those muscles mm -hmm. right of living that life that is listening to god first um i just want to talk briefly at the end here that before we end about you know how crowded our lives are in terms of yeah. noise so noisy and i mean the amount of noise in in, in modern day life compared to even life i don't know 50 years ago 100 300 years ago for sure um, it really is a struggle hmm. today in today's world. There is so much trying to vie for your attention yeah. and providing content into your life. And this has probably been said many times, but it is so, so, so important that we learn to actually not just filter out because filter out means you're consuming and then you're having to filter, which is actually double the work, but really putting it down. You know, mm -hmm. not giving that the space in the place. If you're just surfing the web or whatever it is and, you know, stop and say to yourself, do I really need this now? Is it really information that I'm searching out because I'm learning about something or studying something? Or is this just, you know, numification, self-gratification instead of filling myself with the word of God, mm -hmm. instead of filling myself with the voice of the Lord in my life? And because we are such avid content consumers, you know, this can be be a slippery slope that people don't understand that they you get to this place where the majority of the voice that is entering your life is not the voice of God yeah that's so true yeah we're going to talk about that a lot in the next episode um I think that's a really good place to stop because then it's wet their appetite for the next episode <laughs> so we're going to be back with another one make sure you tune in and we'll catch you next time Thanks for stopping by guys. Make sure you're subscribed so that you never miss an episode. And if you have loved this show, please leave us a rating. Yeah, we'd so appreciate it. And share it with your friends and your family. We are so excited that you have joined the journey.